Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir Alazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com. And today, we'll talk about the September update. So first, we'll go on the hot topics for what happens mainly with uh, a lot of countries in the European Union and outside. Uh, we'll also go to some uh, key events that will happen uh, this month, so September and October. Uh, we'll also uh, mention the situation regarding notified bodies, uh, then uh, about the guidances, so NDCG guidance primarily. And at the end, we'll look at what happened within Easy Medical Device. So uh, let's go. First, uh, this information about FDA. So um, in the US, there is a, a complete shift uh, in terms of the regulation for some specific products. So those products were drugs before, and now they will have to move to devices. And this will maybe change the entire industry. So it's important to, to listen uh, about that. So um, this is mainly an F FDA. Uh, lo uh, so FDA lost a court uh, battle against Genius. Uh, so mainly the, the objective was uh, regarding Genius to change the regulation for the contrast imaging agents. Uh, they are regulating the US as a drug, but apparently they are also meeting uh, the definition of a medical device. Then the, um, mainly the, the court said that uh, as it's meeting the de medical device definition, it should be registered as a medical device and not as a, as a drug. So if you have some devices that are drug and devices at the same time, you have really to define which one is the is the most um, important for them so mainly this is uh, here the device that is winning and uh, the rule is mainly that um, if you have some kind of chemical actions uh, within or on the body so then it will be a device it's more if it's more dependent upon a, a metabolized uh, product so then it will be maybe uh, more considered as a drug so uh, FDA is now planning to transition those products so they are trying also to define a list of products that are impacted by that, uh, and they will communicate that list. They will also try, uh, what they are saying mainly, they will also try to uh, make it easy for all the manufacturers to transition to not have any disruption on the market. So you can go on the show notes to read the article about, about that. Then we move to Germany. So Germany uh, is alerting us uh, that there is uh, a potential issue of, of vulnerability related to some, some real-time operating systems. Uh, so it's interesting because this is an alert coming from the US mainly. Um, so um, the US agency, so the Cyber Security and Infrastructure Service Agency, um, emitted an alert. And apparently only B Farm in Europe just alerted about that. Uh, so this is mainly some um, some devices that are using some of those uh, real-time operating system uh, like QNX or VX works. But there is a full list of those systems that are uh, on the on the B Farm uh, notification, and you can have that on the on the show notes. So there is apparently some critical vulnerability in those systems and the medical device manufacturers will have to issue to make some, some updates. And if one of those issues is really impacting the market, they will have to issue an F, a field safety corrective action and inform uh, the B farm about that. The question is why this is only B farm who is informing about that. This should be mainly European. All Europe should talk about that um, because mainly uh, it's not only in Germany that we have some some um, some manufacturers that are using those systems. So I'm alerting. Go to this uh, notification from B Farm. Uh, it's in English, uh, and you can just uh, look specifically at the operating system. And if you see that you are using one of those real uh, real time operating system, then please uh, check if there is any vulnerability for you, uh, if there is any correction to do, and also inform uh, your health authority if there is any field safety corrective action. So I think it's important. So yeah, I also, maybe if the EU Commission is listening to that, so maybe it will be great also that these uh, issues that are uh, discovered locally and informed locally can also be raised at the European uh, Union uh, because mainly this is not impacting just one country, it's really impacting the European Union. So France is anticipating some uh, disruptions of uh, products on the market, some uh, medical device products on the market, and they have uh, issued a new procedure for uh, those uh, companies that are um, seeing that there will be some issues. Uh, they are mainly having a procedure that will be applied from September 1st, 2021. Uh, mainly there is some preventive action that you have to do. You have to check. I mean, they are also already alerting, say, be careful of your stocks and be sure that everything is fine. 
fine, but they are mainly talking about products that are really essential uh, to the healthcare uh, system. So mainly, um, there is no definition. So what is an essential product is mainly something that is uh, maybe defined by them. But then they are alerting and saying, if you have any description, so alert us. And they have defined a decision tree. They have defined also some uh, a form that they have to fill. So many, it's, it's targeted to the kind of purchasing or uh, departments that are the, the ones that are buying products, for example, from health healthcare facilities or from manufacturers that are also uh, maybe uh, aware of these descriptions on, on the market. So um, everything is in French. I didn't find uh, I didn't find if there is a, any uh, thing in English. But if you are French, if you are in, in France and you are selling your products in France, uh, if you see that you have any description of the market uh, of your products on the market, then please uh, go. Uh, it's also on the show notes. Go to the link on the show notes. You'll have the process. You'll have the forms. You have the decision trees that you have to uh, to go through. So this is applicable from September first, twenty twenty one. Okay, so let, now let's talk about Finland. So Finland has uh, created some uh, medical act, so to supplement the MDR and IVDR, uh, where uh, we are talking mainly about some specific situation inside Finland, in Finland, uh, because in the MDR, there are some areas of it that says it is upon uh, the, the national authority to decide some of those aspects. And in this, um, in this uh, medical act, so Finland is deciding on some of the elements that are um, in a question mark on the MDR. So many, for example, uh, they are talking about registration of uh, obligations of uh, economic operators, uh, about the fact that in Finland, uh, disposable devices uh, cannot be reprocessed or reused in Finland. So this was also something that was uh, published as a, as a, as a, um, as a common specification by the European uh, Union, which says mainly that um, the national authorities can decide freely if a product that is disposable can be reused, reprocessed after making some studies by the healthcare facility, etc. So Finland says no. Uh, a disposable, it's disposable, so we are not authorizing our healthcare facilities to decide and to then move to uh, reprocessing some disposable devices. Uh, so you have also here uh, some information about the operator supervisory, supervisory fees, you have the language requirements, so uh, apparently Finnish, Swedish and English is authorized, but if there is some alerts on your device, some uh, issues, some warnings, this should not be in English. So this is mainly also something that is mentioned there. So if you are selling your products in Finland, then uh, please read that because it's mentioning a lot of important things for you. Uh, and it's also talking about IVDR. So mainly uh, the medical act is also, there is a second medical act also talking about IVDR. And here uh, the elements that are mentioned there are partially available because mainly um, IVDR will be in place by May 26, 2022. So uh, this is something that they are uh, anticipating. Maybe there will be some updates also uh, after that. But if you are selling your products in Finland, these are some medical acts that you have to read to understand exactly what are the rules for MDR and IVDR in Finland. Okay, now let's go to the UK. So UK, uh, they have made a small update about uh, their way to do uh, yeah, free sell certificates uh, for the export, so to issue a free sell certificate. Um, so mainly what I wanted to mention here is the fact that, um, yeah, um, there are um, some ways or some rules related to the ordering of free sell certificates. I take this example of UK, but this is mainly also for all the European Union, uh, where uh, only a UK-based manufacturer a UK responsible person or authorized representative in Europe or uh, here in the UK, a Northern Ireland based authorized representative can order a free sell certificate. Uh, so this cost in the UK, for example, 75 pounds uh, up to 10 for to take uh, and it can take 10 days, uh, working days to, to get that. So um, as I've said, it's nearly the same in all the European Union. Uh, I had a lot of calls uh, from companies importers, distributors outside of the European Union that are saying, okay, can you help us to get a free sell certificate? Uh, we are selling our products in Mexico or in Germany, uh, in uh, Argentina or uh, in Asia or wherever. And they say, but the authorities wants to see a free sell certificate from Europe which make it, makes it easier for them then to sell their products. And the point is, um, I am not the authorized representative for the manufacturers that are delivering those products in Europe. Uh, I am, yeah, so this is not possible for me to order 
a free sale certificate uh, unless there is maybe some special rules in some countries but in the countries I'm working with so uh, each time I'm, uh, you look at, at the designation they say are you a manufacturer or the authorized representative uh, maybe some are asking for importer directly but me as a person that is not on this uh, logistic uh, area I cannot do that so it's the same here if you are in need of a free sale certificate, go directly to, uh, if you are an importer and distributor in a certain country, country go directly to uh, your uh, manufacturer. They have to initiate that or this manufacturer will contact its authorized representative to initiate that. So uh, this is also something that is really important for you to understand so that you understand how, if, if, if your business can work, well, if I can say, with, uh, with or without this free sale certificate. And then we go to Switzerland now. So Switzerland, uh, we are still in Swixit. Uh, there is still no contract or agreement uh, under the uh, with, between Europe and, uh, and Switzerland. So we still consider Switzerland as a third party country. And the Swiss Medic has issued a guidance to explain how, uh, what is the role of a, a Swiss representative, importer, distributor, healthcare facility, etc. So it's really well explained inside uh, what are their role and responsibility, what they can do and not do, etc. Et uh, so this is, I think, a document that is really important if you are um, becoming a, a Swiss authorized representative. Also, if you are an importer, so remember that it's the same as in the European Union. As soon as you are selling the products in Switzerland, for example, I mean, in that case, Switzerland, uh, you need an authorized representative and you need an importer. So it's not like you are just appointing an authorized representative and you are in a good shape. No, you are also appointing a, uh, or designating a, a, uh, an importer that will be taking the responsibility of the importer. There is no need of a designation for the importer. It's just the fact that you have to have one. Uh, and this importer has also to register within uh, the within Swiss Medic. So as uh, the authorized representative, the importer should also register within Swiss Medic. So um, this guidance is really interesting. So you can go there and check exactly what are the role and responsibilities so that you are really understanding. There is an FAQ, uh, frequently asked question at the end so that you can also see some specific question that people are asking to them. Uh, so I think, yeah, it's, it's really a good document and um, I will really recommend to, to look at that if you have any question about uh, Swiss um, representative importer or distributor in Switzerland. Okay, so uh, just to, to transition on that, so uh, Easy Medical Device now is also able to help you as a, a UK representative. So we have done that following the Brexit. Then as a Swiss representative, because our office is in Switzerland, so we are helping also uh, a lot of manufacturers to move their products to Switzerland. I mean, not to move, they were already selling their products to Switzerland and now they need to appoint a, a, a Swiss representative. Then recently, we also registered our company uh, for the European Union in Belgium. So uh, we, ha we are registered also in uh, Udamed. So if you need also a Euro European authorized representative, then you can also contact us. So the idea here is that uh, for me, the objective was mainly to serve um, the customers that uh, we are working with in case they have a need to be represented in some of those countries. And the idea is also that um, in case one of the customer wants to go to the three markets, then we can make some kind of discounts or helping them related to that, uh, not having to um, to, uh, to charge them um, the registration fees or the uh, review of technical file fees when mainly uh, we can review it once for the three countries. So don't hesitate then if you need uh, our support for that. Uh, so don't hesitate to uh, contact us. Uh, the emails will be also on the show notes, uh, but the main email is info at easymedicaldevice.com, info, I-N-F-O at easymedicaldevice.com. And then we'll transition, uh, we'll transfer that to the, the person that is in charge of each of the regions. Okay, so I think, I hope that this will be really helpful for you. And in case you need another service that you say, okay, uh, we need also this kind of service, please let me know because I'm always trying to find a way to help you to find a way to um, create some services that uh, will be necessary for you in Europe. So don't hesitate to uh, to uh, also send me an email at info at easymedicaldevices.com and just suggest me, say, oh, I will need this, I will need that. Uh, and if there is enough uh, customers that are asking for that, we'll maybe try to find a way to create this uh, this service for you. 
So the season of events is opening now. So we have a lot of events that will come and I'm participating to four events within the month of September and October. And I wanted just to share that with you. So first we have the GCC uh, event, so GCC MedTech, uh, which is uh, the Middle East event that is happening. It's a virtual event where we'll talk a lot about uh, all the regulatory regulations, uh, quality regulations uh, aspects. There is a lot of good speakers. We'll have some, uh, some uh, panel discussions. Uh, so uh, don't hesitate to go also, the dates are from September 20th uh, to September 22nd, uh, so three days where uh, you will have a lot of content related to quality and regulatory affairs. Uh, so don't hesitate to go on the show notes to the um, to the to check the email address. So uh, www.gccmedtech.com. So all attached. Then. Um, there is an event that uh, I am um, co-working with uh, for the for the creation. So mainly, uh, it's uh, uh, an event that I'm uh, I'm doing with Jack Wong uh, May from uh, I am so from ARPA uh, that uh, we are really working on on this uh, this kind of event. Uh, so we are trying to make it uh, convenient because it's the first time it will be in the European Union uh, so we have made it on September 28th and 29th morning only so that also the Asia part uh, can be part of be part of it so uh, go also to the show notes to see the agenda we have uh, some good speakers there uh, we have Eric Wolbrecht we have uh, uh, Basil Acro that will also speak there Martin Vite from Chief Sud also we speak, so uh, I try to really have some good uh, good speakers so that we can uh, give you a, uh, an event with uh, some updated information related to MDR and also IVDR. So don't hesitate, hesitate to go there also. Then we have uh, a French one. So uh, uh, we have in France so uh, a school, so a biomedical engineering school, which is called uh, EZFC, Institut Supérieur. Uh, d'ingénierie de, de Franche-Comté. Uh, so it's a, a school that is located in Besançon and they have also created uh, an event that is starts to be really well known uh, in France and, and the really Frank, uh, French uh, regions. So many it's called Rentrée du DM, uh, which will be happening October 6th and 7th and I will also be part of it. Uh, so if you are there, so don't hesitate uh, to meet me. Uh, we will be really happy to, uh, to discuss with you. Uh, so, uh, and I thank also uh, Florent Guillon, who is the uh, the one that uh, that invited me to this event and I will see uh, if I can really we can really have some good sessions there so don't hesitate to join us and the link is also um, uh, in uh, in the show notes uh, and the date also so October 6th and 7th then the last one will be the MedTech virtual summit uh, which will be happening in October 18th and 22nd uh, where we'll also discuss I mean a lot of good speakers are also going there so uh, just look at the agenda look at the at the program that is there so um mainly uh, all those um, events will be there uh, in the show notes uh, so for those events I will be speaking um, if you want to see my my the, the talk that I will do uh, be providing so go to the the links but mainly, yeah, we'll really talk about all the new updates. We'll talk about Brexit, Swixit. Uh, we'll talk about uh, a lot of things related to regulatory compliance. So um, I think it will be really a good event and good updates also for you. So don't hesitate to join us. Okay, our favorite topic now. So notified bodies. <laughs> so we had a new notified body uh, that was uh, accredited not for MDR, but for IVDR, which is GMED. So GMED is already appointed for MDR. Uh, but now, uh, recently, they were appointed for IVDR, which is good. So now we have 22 notified bodies for MDR and six for IVDR. I remember, yeah, recently it was like four, then five, now six. So I hope there will be more because, uh, as we've said, so uh, IVDR is coming soon. So the 26th of May, 2022. Uh, then uh, a lot nearly 90%, 95%, let's say, of the products are transitioning from self-certification to notified body certification. So it's really huge. So it means that nearly all companies that are delivering uh, in vitro diagnostic um, products will have to have a notified body. Uh, so you have, you cannot, yeah, you cannot go away from that. So, uh, and nearly uh, there is no transition period because uh, mainly if you go from cell certificate to, uh, to, uh, to uh, this, so mainly it's immediate from the 26th of May 2022. So please, um, yeah, move forward with that. Try to have your notified bodies. Try to have your certifications uh, so that mainly you are ready for the 26th of May 2022. Okay, let's go now to guidances. So we had three 
MDCG guidance that were released uh, this month, I mean the month of August. Uh, so the first is the MDCG 2021-21, which is a guidance on the performance evaluation of SARS-CoV-2 in vitro diagnostic medical devices. So um, as they mentioned inside uh, this um, MDCG guidance, this guidance is the basis for the common specification related to uh, the for the IVDR. So mainly, this is something that is really important to take into account because uh, when the common specification will be published, mainly to be based on this MDCG guidance. And here, mainly, we are talking about a lot of aspects, parameters related uh, the 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 calif qualification and uh, of the of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, in vitro diagnostic product. So here, the overall consideration are on sensitivity and specificity, uh, on interference and cross reactivity, on anticoagulation, anticoagulants verification, on the batch testing criteria. So uh, there will be also a lot of tables that are um, mentioned there where more uh, more information for each type of products so if you are in this business of having some tests for uh, COVID-19 so uh, I think this is something that is really key for you to read uh, because if you want to continue your business after when the uh, IVDR will be in place uh, this is mainly what you have to follow uh, for IVDR so this is really important so uh, this is also on the show note go there and just uh, read it the next one is MDCG 2021-22, which is um, a long text, a long text, this one. So, uh, clarification on first certification for that type of device, which is in bracket, and corresponding procedures to be followed by notified bodies in the context of the consultation of the expert panel referred in Article 48 of uh, UMDR. So, um, mainly here, this guidance is specifically um, for notified bodies on uh, no uh, on IVDR sorry uh, so for notified bodies to decide uh, is your class D device does your class D device need to go to an expert panel you know that uh, for performance evaluation you have to go through uh, some expert panel uh, for reviewing I mean the notified bodies reviewing the, the products and then it has to decide to go to an expert panel and the, here it says to you that there is two criteria to decide first is there a common specification that is published? If the answer is no, then the second criteria is where is, uh, is this the first certification for this product, for this type of product? Um, so mainly here it, it helps you to define um, what are we talking about type of products, first time of this type of products, etc. Because maybe you have a similar type of product that was already certified before and this is a new version but it's nearly the same but it's not maybe the first time, etc., etc. So here it's really clarifying. But first, if your product has a common specification, uh, then you can already say, okay, it's fine. Then no need to go to an expert panel. Uh, if your product doesn't have a common specification, then mainly uh, if it's the first certification, you'll have to go to the expert panel. But uh, as I said, read carefully this uh, this guidance so that it gives you exactly the, the the right definition and terms of what we are talking about here. And the last guidance which is an important one, which is uh, the guidance for notified bodies uh, related to distributor and importers uh, for Article 16, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, how to say, <laughs> dash four or something like that, 16 par par part four uh, of the EUMDR and IVDR. So mainly what it is. So mainly uh, you, if you are an importer and distributor, um, if you can be considered as a manufacturer, if, for example, you are changing the name of a device, if you are changing the intended purpose of a device, if you are changing a device that is already marketed, etc., so then you can be considered as a manufacturer. But if you are just translating the information that are provided with the device, uh, so one-to-one -one translation, if you are repackaging this also, then you are not considered as a manufacturer, but you still need to have uh, a notified body that is reviewing your quality management system and verifying that you are uh, doing good for, with that. So um, it's really, yeah, let's say <laughs> strange when you read that because mainly, yeah, there was this confusion or not confusion, but this clarification related to the fact that on the article 16, it says that you have to have a quality management system which should be reviewed by a notified body. But the question was, can a certification body be sufficient or should it be a notified body? Here, apparently, it should be a notified body. But now then the question is the fact that a notified body is selected per product, uh, so per type of products. And here it clarifies that, yes, 
If you are distributing uh, pacemakers, so your notified body should be qualified for pacemakers. Then they are coming, they are auditing you, they are giving you a certificate speci specific uh, to pacemakers, etc. But if you have another uh, manufacturer, another person that is distributing through you, but it's a dental product then. Um, so then they have to have all this notified body that they already appointed uh, is also qualified for dental products. Or if it's not, then they have to appoint a second notified body, uh, which is then uh, accredited for dental products. Uh, so I see here it can be really a nightmare, I suppose, for some of the importer or distributors because at the end, the manufacturer will appoint a notified body to certify its products. Then the importer will appoint a notified body to have a qualification for his quality management system. He has to get also a certificate for that, uh, which is uh, something that is also uh, new, if I can say, to this, uh, this market. And if this importer, which is an importer, so it means that he can have multiple clients with multiple products, with multiple things, then he has to appoint, uh, if possible, a notified body that is, has really a, a big a big scope uh, for its product so that any of his clients are under the same notified body or otherwise you will have to appoint a second one. Um, the advice that I'm giving to importers and distributors and maybe to manufacturers also is um, try to avoid that by just for the manufacturers by just providing to your importers and distributors products that are already in the right language, in the right packaging, so that there is no modification at all, because then you will yeah, help them a lot and you will create less burden for everybody. Um, because this is really, I, I suppose by reading this guidance, it will be really a, a big a big burden for every importer or distributors that are doing these activities of repacking or uh, of uh, translation. So if you want to avoid that, the manufacturers should take the responsibility to provide to you, if you are, for example, in Greece, uh, uh, documentation, packaging, all in Greek, uh, so that uh, everything will be fine for you, uh, instead of you having to translate, having to repack and do everything like that. So, um, yeah, this is just an advice. So I'm not like here uh, doing <laughs> this kind of thing, saying uh, that uh, it's better. It's just an advice. If you want to avoid this situation, go on that route. I mean, go on the other route, man. Okay, now let's let's go to the easy medical device situation. So mainly, uh, we had uh, three podcasts uh, this month. The first podcast is um, what can we learn from the MDR audit. So we had that with uh, uh, Martin Vite from Tufsud. So Martin helped us to understand what kind of issues are happening often uh, during an MDR audit and helping you to solve those issues before the auditor is arriving. So here, yeah, uh, you can go and, and check that on the show notes. Uh, episode 141, which is uh, better to be a consultant or a full-time employee. So we had uh, Smahan Tugray from a uh, tech firm who is a consultant who helped us to understand what is the advantage to be a consultant, what is the role and responsibility, uh, how are you welcomed when you arrive to your company, when it's a big company, a small company, etc. Et so uh, this is really something that can help you if you are a full-time employee, for example, and asking yourself, should I go for consulting? Then maybe this uh, this episode will help you a lot because yes, Mahan has some experience on that and, and she provided really good advice for, for you. And we have episode 142, uh, which is called How to Certify uh, a Medical Device. And we had that with Dr. Aptin Rad from Tuf Sud. Uh, so it's really a, a complete episode where we talked a lot about uh, software as medical device. We answered a lot of questions that people are asking me nearly every day when they are contacting me uh, about class one. Is my software still a class one or not? Uh, so you know that a lot of software under MDD were class one. And now under MDR, they will become class 2A. Uh, so the question I asked also Dr. Aptin Rad is mainly uh, uh, is there still some class one devices as a software as a medical device? Uh, we talked also about cybersecurity, uh, the fact that uh, there is a lot of issues or things that you have to consider uh, for the software. And the last one about artificial intelligence uh, related to the new regulation, the European regulation that is coming, where you will need also a notified body for that. So the question is, is your notified body qualified for medical devices and artificial intelligence, or is it qualified only for artificial intelligence? So uh, you have to, uh, you have then to select two notified bodies for, for your product. So, um, so yeah, if you are developing a software as a medical device, this episode is really made for you. 
Okay, so it was a pleasure for me to uh, introduce you to all those uh, updates. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me uh, if you need any support for your project, if you need a consultant, if you need uh, some help. So contact me at info at easymedicaldevice.com. Uh, if you need also a European authorized representative, a UK representative, responsible person, UK responsible person. Uh, if you need a, a Swiss representative, so don't hesitate also to contact me. I would be really, it would be really my pleasure to, to help you. So uh, then thank you again for uh, looking at this video. Uh, don't hesitate to go also on the uh, show notes to look at all the links that I provided and uh, I wish you a nice day.